Hello! Today we're going to learn how to use co-precipitation to synthesize battery cathode materials. In this example, we will synthesize sodium lithium nickel manganese oxide, or NLNMO for short. Co-precipitation is useful to help achieve a proper spherical structure of cathode particles. Spherical mesostructures improve the mechanical and electrochemical properties of cathode materials. For this experiment, we will need sodium carbonate, nickel 2 nitrate hexahydrate, and manganese 2 nitrate tetrahydrate. Additionally, they will be separated into 1 molar transition metal and 0.2 molar sodium carbonate bottles. As some of the chemicals can be quite dangerous, remember kids, don't try this at home. Check that the tubes are cleaned and are not leaking by running deionized water through them. Clean the pH electrode and ensure that it reads the correct pH of DI water. Set up the reaction bottle with the stir bar, pH electrode, and pump tubes. Ensure that the stir bar does not touch the sides of the bottle or the pH probe. Insert one pump tube into the basic sodium carbonate solution and the other tube into the acidic transition metal solution. Turn on the stir bar and run both pumps until the solutions reach the end of their tubes. At this point, turn off the acid pump and allow the base to drip until the pH probe registers a relatively stable, high pH. Turn both pumps on again until a pH of 7.8 is reached. This shouldn't be too hard, since 7.8 is pretty basic. Continue allowing the sodium carbonate solution to drip while maintaining constant pH by controlling the pump. Here are some helpful tips. Pay attention to pH. It must remain relatively constant to ensure no side reactions occur. Stir speed. Slowly increase the stir speed as the reaction bottle fills to ensure proper mixing. Color. The product should look like honeydew milk tea throughout the process. It may look tasty, but don't drink it. Reactant liquid levels. When the reactant bottle is nearly empty, hold it at an angle so that all of the liquid will be drawn up by the pump. Allow the product to stir for several minutes, then remove all items from the reaction bottle. This includes the pH probe, pump tubes, and stir bar. Tightly close the bottle and heat it at 80 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. Don't forget to clean up your workstation. When aging is complete, filter the precipitate to separate the water and any leftover ions within solution. Set up your filter station inside the fume hood. Carefully pour the product into the filter, rinsing the reaction bottle with DI water to ensure all possible precipitate is cleared from the container. As the water level in the filter lowers, refill with DI water in order to wash contaminant ions through the filter. When approximately 3 liters of DI water is used to rinse the precipitate, allow all the leftover water to filter through. Heat the precipitate for 80 degrees Celsius for around 6 hours or until it's completely dry. Once the precipitate is dried, transfer it to a labeled vial and store it in a sealed container. Congratulations! You've just made a precursor for the sodium cathode material. To complete the cathode material, calcination is done at a high temperature. First, mix sodium carbonate and lithium carbonate at 5% excess to the precursor material. Be sure to grind the powders gently in order not to break the spherical mesostructure. Carefully pour the mixture in a crucible, then place in a box furnace. Set the box furnace to 900 degrees Celsius over a 3 hour ramp period, then hold at 900 degrees for 12 hours. Once your material has cooled, the sodium cathode material NLNMO is ready.